until I started to speak for the first time in 2006, I was scared of speaking in front of people. So I would have never thought I would stand even on a stage to talk about something. Um, the reason why it was like that for me was when I was little, I was a very, very quiet child. And being in Japan and growing up in Japan, being quiet is very convenient because um, the society or people, you know, or culture expect you to be um, polite, respectful, humble, and then also not so different from others. <laughs> so if you are following everybody else's way and you didn't speak up too much, and then um, being respectful, you would be okay. So I just kept being the very quiet child all through my childhood. As I was growing up, I started to wonder why we were doing all we did because my parents were working so hard but when they came home they weren't happy like often they were fighting and uh, I, I would hear their argument when I'm sleeping and I would feel very sad about it and I felt why is everybody trying so hard when all, all we wanted was to feel good and feel connected and you know, feel loved and when I finally graduated from my college and then I um, studied architecture at the college so uh, during that college time I went to Europe just once and I saved up all the money working really hard and then went joined on this um, European architecture study tour for me like a foreign world was some was something like really disconnected outside and without being able to speak any of you know other European languages I experienced a few moments of like people's really amazing kindness and then I thought wow actually the outside world is amazing and maybe I could find better like life or happiness in outside world because it's definitely not here <laughs> I thought then I worked really hard and saved up money again and I went to Canada and I went there to study for a short time, like seven months. And without having any sophisticated words or um, ability to communicate, I realized that I could be closer to people because I could be more open. I didn't have to try to say clever things, but I could just say, oh, I love you, or I like this food, and I'm so happy being here with you. Or So you could see those kind of things in a very simple way. And people accepted me. And we, I created many great friends, and I thought, well, this is what, where I want to live, you know, spend the rest of my life. So then I ended up staying a bit more because I was determined to not go back to Japan. And then, but then because my visa was expiring soon, and I was renewing to traveler's visa, and then I moved to Vancouver, and I landed in this new city, and I thought, I'm gonna be here. <laughs> so then I started to knock on the doors of cafes along the street, which I kind of liked, because they were nice cafes. And I said, can I have a job, please? And then I go to one place to the other, and then said, mm, maybe. And then so they start asking me questions. Oh, you don't have a work visa? No, we can't help you. <laughs> so then next, 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 next. And at the end, finally, I found this place, which was a, a cafe. And the lady said, oh, I like you. You can come and just work for us, you know, volunteer. And they just work for us. Tomorrow you come here at 6 a.m. So I said, well, I'll come. <laughs> and then 6 a.m. I slept in. And I'm a bit late, like half an hour late, feeling terrible when I turn up. But anyway, she let me work. So after that, I worked like you know, every day from 6 a.m. to maybe like 8 p.m. every day and kept going and doing everything I could do. And then one week later, she said, I like you. You can work for me. <laughs> so I stayed there like for six months and then eventually I had to move because the Canadian government sensed me working. <laughs> so I got called for an appointment and then I had to speak with scary immigration officer who looked at me quite coldly and said, hmm, well, it doesn't matter if you're working or not. I think you are. You should leave and you should, I don't think you should come back to Canada for at least a few years and that, that would be okay. So I said, okay, I obey. <laughs> So my Canadian time had to be had to end, even though I really felt sad about leaving Canada, and I had to go back to Japan. Um, but then, before going back to Japan, I still wanted to do something. So I was thinking, so what else can I do or learn? 
because I still um, you know have a little bit of money left that I could actually do something or learn something so I chose Guatemala because when I learned English my life became bigger even though I still didn't speak English that fluently but just having the ability to communicate with people who, ha who come, came from totally different background or environment opened up my world and transformed my perspective. So I thought if I learned another language, then it would be even more. <laughs>